from the Alex Trebek stage at Sony Picture Studios, this is Jeopardy! Please welcome today's contestants, a senior quality assurance administrator from Henderson, Nevada, Alan Alvarez. A teacher from Chicago, Illinois, Stacy Garner. And our returning champion, a graduate student from Birmingham, Michigan, Drew Basile, whose four-day cash winnings total $75,682. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Ken Jenny. Thank you, Johnny. Welcome to Jeopardy. Our four-game champion, Drew Basile, kicked off the week with an impressive runaway win yesterday, picking up 33 correct responses along the way. That's the most we've seen in a single game from any contestant all season long. A win today would guarantee Drew a spot in the Tournament of Champions, but Stacy and Alan are here today, hoping to put a stop to that plan. I wish all three of you the very best of luck. Back to you, Drew. Awards and honors, 400. You can get college credit for taking these exams, AP for short. And if you get a three or higher on three or more of them, you can be an AP scholar. Drew. What is advanced placement? Right. Won't you be my neighbor for 200? A neighbor of Manhattan, this northernmost New York City borough is just over the Willis Avenue Bridge. Drew. What is the Bronx? Yes. Awards and honors, 800. The Oscars of the advertising world are named this after the muse of history. Drew. What are Cleos? That's right. Won't you be my neighbor for 600? As part of the landlocking of this nation, Cambodia borders its southern tip. Drew. What is Laos? Good. Won't you be my neighbor 800? Ontario is directly east of this province, eh? Drew. What is Manitoba? That's it. Statues and statutes for 400, please. Chisholm, Minnesota, in the Mesabi Range, is home to this man, a miner for the local ore, who sounds like a superhero. Drew. Uh, who is Iron Man? Correct. Statues for 600. The FOIA, this statute, beloved by the press, was signed into law by LBJ on July 4th, 1966. Drew. What is the Freedom of Information Act? Right. You pull ahead of Drew with that clue for an early lead. Congratulations to you. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come right back with more Jeopardy. Stay with us. Basile is a graduate student from Birmingham, Michigan, and you've been watching Jeopardy since way back in high school, right? Well, my motives were a little impure, Ken, because in high school, I was uh, secretary of the student body, which meant I had my own office. And I like to go in there and, and linger instead of attending class. And I began to watch Jeopardy during these off periods of skipping. And people really wanted to, I don't know if they were into the Jeopardy, they were into the skipping, but I ended up getting a sizable audience that would appear every day at seventh period to watch Jeopardy with me. And that was uh, my origin of playing along. You're probably our best ever champ who got here by skipping class. <laughs> <laughs> now, incidentally, speaking of Jeopardy, Jeff Probst is a big friend of the show. You know, he hosted Rock and Roll Jeopardy yeah. back in the day. And he has heard about your success on the show. And he was so excited, Drew. He was like, uh, what a great kid. He's amazing. He was amazing on our show. Like, he was so delighted to hear you're doing well here. Wow, I don't even know what to say. Your reputation follows you to the Jeopardy set. Uh, a tattooed for 200. In the late 1990s, a version of this doll was released sporting a butterfly tattoo. Due to parental uproar, it was discontinued. Drew. It was Barbie. Barbie's first tattoo, right. Um, sounds like a Roman numeral quality, 600. Describes a ripe pomegranate or an unappealing rundown hotel. Drew. What is CD? Yes, CD. Roman numeral for 200. Finish that category. A host who runs an event from the stage and introduces others. Drew. What is an MC? Yes. Bring it, I guess. In 1769, this British captain wrote in his journal about the Polynesians, both sexes paint their bodies, tato as it is called. Stacy. Who is Cook? It is Captain Cook, yes. You have the lead with $5,800. The champs in second. Alan, you'll select first in the double jeopardy round. It begins in just a moment. Three baddies for 400. In this 1987 novel by Stephen King, a historical romance writer is tortured by Annie Wilkes. Stacy. What is Bag of Bones? No, I'm sorry. Drew. What is Misery? Yes. Literary baddies, 1600. In an 1886 work, a doctor worries that this villainous alter ego will destroy his written confession. Drew. What is uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde? Um, yes, we'll take that. Mr. Hyde's the alter ego. Okay. Back to you, Drew. Kingdom 16. The answer there, the other daily double. A moment when you may have needed a bit of a break, Drew. You are down by 1,000. Uh, um, 3,000. $3,000. You would take the lead, if correct, in... Kingdom. 
The unification of Italy put an end to the kingdom of the two Sicilies, actually Sicily and a kingdom named for this mainland city. Um, what is Naples? It is Naples, yes. You just pulled into the lead. No more Daily Doubles. Uh, British television for 800. Ricky Gervais co-created this sitcom on which he played David Brent, manager of a branch of a paper company. Drew. What is The Office? Yes. British television, 1600. Once Rob Stark on Game of Thrones, Richard Madden moved on to this title character assigned to protect a politician. Drew. Who is the bodyguard? Show's called Bodyguard, yes. Um, come for 2000, please. This word from Latin for to hang can replace coming, especially when what's coming isn't good. Drew. What is impend? No. What is impend or impending? We put it in the space 400. 25 years ago, NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory was launched into space aboard the Columbia. This type of craft. Drew. Was a space shuttle? Right. Kingdom for 400. The United Kingdom was created by uniting these two kingdoms. Drew. What is England and Scotland? Right. Come for 400. It follows come in a famous instruction to Mr. Watson, and means come by itself when said to a pet. Drew. What is here? Yes. Both of you giving Drew a real run for his money today. Close game heading into final. The category will be National Monuments. And we'll be back with the clue in two shakes of a lamb's tail. This close game will be decided by a single clue. The category is National Monuments, and here's the final Jeopardy clue. From its ramparts, you can see the mouth of the Patapsco River as it flows into Chesapeake Bay. 30 seconds. Good luck. some famous ramparts. You might have even sung about them at some point. We'll start with Stacey Garner in the middle, who had $7,400. Her response was, what is the key bridge? That's not correct, I'm afraid, Stacey, although you're in the right neighborhood. How much did you wager? You lost $4,401, bringing you down to $2,999. Alan Elverum was in second place with $7,800. He wrote down... What is Fort McHenry? That is correct. Or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming from the national anthem. So you're gonna add, what did you wager? 7,001, wow, you now have $14,801 and the lead. So it comes down to Drew Basile. He needs to get this right if he wants a guaranteed invite to the Tournament of Champions. Did he come up with Fort McHenry? He got it. Did he wager enough? 3801 takes him to 15,601. Drew, you are now a five-day Jeopardy champion. Your total, $91,283. We'll be seeing him in the TOC, but we'll also be seeing him tomorrow. Join us then.